So on December 12th, there will be a general election that takes place in the United Kingdom. And basically, British voters are going to choose between the British equivalent of Donald Trump and the British equivalent of Bernie Sanders, Boris Johnson versus Jeremy Corbyn. Now, to be clear, their system is different in the UK. They have a parliamentary system and you don't vote for candidates, you vote for the party. But since Jeremy Corbyn is the leader of the Labour Party, if you vote for Labour and they win, well, he becomes prime minister if he gets a high enough percentage of seats to form a government. Um, now, the race that he is running is it's brilliant first of all i love that the uk doesn't have multi-year long elections they call an election and then it happens for a couple of weeks and then it's done you can move on but the campaign that jeremy corbyn is running i mean just from the perspective of a u.s political commentator i can't not love everything that he's saying because labor just put out a new manifesto and jeremy corbyn promoted this by putting out a video where he basically named as many policies as he possibly could within 60 seconds. And this is the type of substance that I wish we'd see more often in the United States. Like we see this with candidates like Bernie Sanders and AOC, but not often enough. But really what Jeremy Corbyn is doing is he's upping the bar. And I can't not share this because seeing this makes me genuinely excited about this election, even if it's not going to affect me directly. Big news. We've just launched our new manifesto, so I thought I'd take just 60 seconds to run through as many of the policies as I can. OK, 60 seconds starting now. 26 billion for our NHS, recruiting the doctors and nurses we need. A million new affordable homes to rent or buy with the biggest council house building programme in decades. We'll give you the final say on Brexit within six months. We'll end NHS privatisation, bring down waiting lists and put patients first. We'll scrap university tuition fees, kickstart a green industrial revolution to tackle the climate emergency and create hundreds of thousands of new green jobs of the future. We'll build a national care service with free personal care for over 65s. The fastest fibre optic broadband free for all, a sure start centre in every community. We'll protect the pension triple lock, protect the free bus pass, protect the winter fuel payment and protect the over 75's free TV licence. A real living wage of at least £10 per hour for all workers, boosting the pay of 7.5 million people, introduce a national education service, making world class education available throughout people's lives, more money for schools, reduce class sizes and have public ownership of water, energy and Royal Mail. We'll double the spend on children's mental health and have a councillor in every school to take railways into public ownership. OK, my time's up. But that's only 60 seconds worth. There's 104 pages in here. A fully costed plan to transform Britain after almost a decade of cuts and neglect under Tories and Lib Dems. Take a look and decide for yourself. Boris Johnson's Tories, bankrolled by billionaires, or Labour on your side, offering real change for the many, not just a few. Take care. See you soon. That was absolutely, positively brilliant. This is what really, I think, energizes voters. And in the last election, when he was up against Theresa May as party leader, he overperformed the polls. Nobody really thought that he would do that well, but it was because he ran a fantastically progressive campaign that was based on, you know, policy and not platitudes. And he did a phenomenal job. Now, what he talked about there is, you know, a green industrial revolution. Sounds kind of like a Green New Deal. Free fiber optic broadband for all. Increasing pay for workers. And he also said something that I think is really interesting. And NHS privatization. This should serve as a really important warning for us in the United States as we debate healthcare reform, right? Because a lot of people point out, when I talk about abolishing private insurance here in the United States, people point out, Mike, that's too far because every country, be it Australia or you know the UK, they have private insurance, right? But it's hurting them. In Australia, they open the door to more private insurance and people are complaining because costs go up when you do that. In the United Kingdom, about 10%, I wanna say, approximately of the market is private insurance and it's a constant battle to push back against further privatization. Whenever the, the Tories take power, they want to privatize more and more portions of the national health system that the UK has. So what I say to people in the US is, if you're starting over 
and you're reforming our healthcare. And it's kind of a misnomer to say that we're starting over because we're just expanding Medicare. But I digress. If we're starting, you know, over in terms of reforming our healthcare system, don't start negotiations by saying we're willing to allow some form of private because when you do that, you are intentionally watering down your own public plan in order to preserve some role for private, in order to carve out, you know, holes in our own system to give them something to do as Adam Gaffney puts it. So we, of course, should not do that. Um, but I want to get back to the UK. I, I think that we have a lot to learn from Jeremy Corbyn and Labour. But basically, Boris Johnson is a clown. Not only does he look like Donald Trump, but he acts like Donald Trump. Although I will say, I think he's more intelligent and less unhinged than Donald Trump. Nonetheless, he's a far-right imbecile. But Labour put out an ad that really portrays this shift to the right that we're seeing everywhere. You know, in Brazil, in the UK, in France. And it portrays this xenophobia, this right-wing shift, in a way that it deserves to be portrayed. You know, um, and they do this in an ad that really makes fun of people who scapegoat immigrants, makes fun of politicians specifically who scapegoat immigrants and tell you that all of your problems are because of immigrants. This ad is phenomenal. Please, please. One at a time. My daughter's school is falling apart and there's just not enough teachers to cope. My mother needs surgery and she's been waiting six months. I got made redundant and can't pay my rent, but there are no council houses. Look, I know you're all angry, but there is one simple explanation. It's all his fault. Huh? What's Sally got to do with my mother? Well, he's an immigrant. If we get rid of Ali, then medical waiting times will be shorter because we'll have more doctors. Actually, I, I am a doctor. But what about the services you've cut? Our schools? His fault. Housing? His fault. Hospitals? Look, whatever the problem is, it's because we don't have enough money. And we don't have enough money because we have to spend it all on Ali. What about the money you've just given to that guy? He's just the CEO of a major tech company that needed a tax break, don't worry about him. But if you need money, couldn't you just stop giving it to him? He clearly doesn't need it. You'd start giving it to schools and hospitals instead. Sorry, he's a job creator. He hasn't created any jobs around here. He isn't part of our community. Why would he care about us? I trust Sally more than him. Look, let me level with you. I would love to put more money into housing and healthcare and education, but my hands are tied. I have to give wealthy corporations massive tax cuts because... Because of Ali. Really? That was, that was so good. So they're taking this phenomenon that is immigrant scapegoating that we're seeing throughout the world as these far-right bigots emerge after Donald Trump's election, and they are making fun of it. That's the only way you can really talk about this, because if you truly believe that all of our problems emerge due to the presence of immigrants, then you are being duped by capitalists. You're being duped by people higher up on the economic chain than you who are trying to make you uh, pay attention to people with less money and less power and look away from them. So, I mean, I really, really hope that Jeremy Corbyn wins. He's running a fantastic campaign. Please vote for Labour if you're in the UK. Um, imagine a world where Jeremy Corbyn is the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and Bernie Sanders is the President of the United States. Like, imagine the amount of change. Imagine the paradigm shift worldwide that we'd see. It would be remarkable, and I couldn't even imagine how much change would take place in that period of time where we kind of create this new consensus, internationally speaking, where we no longer do regime change wars, where we respect Palestinian rights. It would be amazing. So I truly, truly hope that he wins. If he doesn't win this election, he's going to be prime minister someday. Um, I just hope that it is sooner rather than later because I truly believe in his message and I, I hope he pulls this off. But he's running a great campaign, so I wouldn't be surprised if he overperforms the polls again.